Hey, special educators, I'm Jennifer from Positively Learning. Welcome to the Special Educators Resource Room. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to save time and streamline your work. That's why this podcast was created, to give you the systems and solutions you need to get your time back. Tune in for tips, tricks, and tools that will help you manage your workload and make the most of your time. Whether you're brand new or experienced, all are welcome in the Special Educators Resource Room. Hey, Special Educators, this is Jennifer from Positively Learning, and welcome to a brand new episode. This is my top 10 tips that are non-teaching tips for you to do during summer break or whenever you have an extended break. These are the exact same tips that I followed just to get my life together before I headed back to school. Now, maybe you are here from episode 25, which were my top 10 teaching-related tips, or at least most of them were. If you just listened to that, welcome back. Here's what I would do if you do not want to think about teaching and you want to give yourself a break. These tips may appear quite random because they are, but I feel that they are all important. Feel free to mix and match and see what works best for you. Tip number one is to think about your morning routine. Now, in my opinion, the morning routine could make or break my day at school. So I was always running it really tight and I pretty much did the same thing every day. Now, if your schedule feels really hectic like mine did, you may want to think about things you can do to smooth out the morning routine and give it a few practice runs before we return to school. Maybe you can make it a little less hectic by preparing your breakfast for the week and putting it in the fridge so it's always ready to go. Maybe it's setting your coffee timer so it's brewing at the same time that your alarm goes off. Or maybe you're setting your outfits out for the week ahead of time. For me, don't hate me, I went to the gym before school so I would have my gym outfits ready and my school outfits. Um, I was the one who went to the gym because I always have had a high level of anxiety and stress and the gym just is somewhere where I can just get that out. I had a track that some days I would just run around the track before I went to school and it helped me quite a bit. I also had a commute home that had a lot of traffic. I lived in the city and by the time I got home and walked in my front door, it was around 5.15 and by that time I could barely put thoughts together. I probably would injure myself if I went to the gym and our gym was so busy in the late afternoon and evenings and no one was there in the morning so it worked out perfectly for me. So my tip is to think about your morning routine. What can you do to make it easier, less hectic, and maybe it's even like a fun time. Maybe there's always a podcast you can listen to. Maybe there's a show that you can watch or videos you can watch. And what can you do to set that up so that your morning routine can run smooth. This next tip goes right along with the morning routine, and that's to look at your closet organization. So you want to save time in the morning and just grab and go with the outfit that you know you're going to feel comfortable in. I kept a certain section in my closet just for teaching outfits. And then when I wear outfit, clean it, usually on the weekend, and put it back, I could put it in the back of that teaching section and it just set up a rotation. It made it so much easier. The next tip is goes right along with this is to look at dry cleaning. So you may not actually have dry cleaning, especially in the summer months, but with dry cleaning, you can also look at any type of repairs, mending that you need to make. I know that in the school year, if a button falls off an outfit or shirt, a coat, whatever, it's done. There is no way I am going to have time during the busy school year to fix a button. So summer is a time that I would look at all of those things, make sure my winter coat is cleaned, even though it's probably warm out right now. I'm just thinking ahead. Buttons are sewed back on. All of those things that we may not usually think about summer, but we definitely don't have time for in the school year. This next tip is a big one, and I bet you already do this, is to look at all of your appointments. These are the appointments that just kind of keep your life together. I always make July my big appointment month, and I've done this every year. So this is when I have my physical, my teeth cleaning, if I have to go get my eyeglasses checked, whatever applies to you. I do this all in July. It's my birthday month, so happy birthday to me. You're going to the doctor again. 
I don't like it, but man, it feels so good when it's done. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to have to have appointments during the school year, but I like to keep them at a minimum just for my own stress levels. And if I can get ahead of it, I will. So definitely important to take care of yourself. The next tip is to take care of your transportation. So I know I am very privileged. I have my own car that I can drive back and forth to school. And in the summer, I do take time to take it in and get my oil change. And I ask them to look at everything, look at the tires for the winter ahead and just give it a once over. And I do realize I am very lucky to be able to do that. I also give my car its annual car wash. So I only wash my car once a year because I don't have time and it rains. That seems like a car wash to me, but I will get one car wash a year. It's always the week before we go back to school. That way when I'm sitting in commutes and I'm feeling stressed out, at least my car smells better and it looks better. So that is my annual routine. The next non-teaching tip for you is to think about your lunches. How did they go this past year? Did you get a chance to sit down? eat lunch? And did you love it? Because you deserve to have a wonderful lunch every day that you enjoy. So let's think about what we can do. Maybe it's getting in a Facebook group and asking for some meal prep ideas. Maybe you have a goal to save money on food prep this year or eat more vegetables during the day. Whatever your goal is, let's see what we can do now in the summer and test it out a little bit. You do not want to test out a brand new meal prep the first week of school and you are so busy, you reach for your jar of salad or whatever you tried out and it's just not what you were expecting. So summer is a great time to try out some of these ideas, maybe batch, put some things in the freezer so that they are ready for you. All right, we are up to tip number seven, and I call this tip comfort items. So we all know that teacher tired is such a real thing. So what can you have for self-care that's in your classroom, or maybe it's in your teaching bag, maybe it's waiting for you in your car. For me, it was pretty random. I really like Bath and Body Works, so I always stocked up on those pocket size hand sanitizers and lotions and travel size things like that that I would have in my classroom, in my bag, in my car. I also always had bubbly, sparkling waters everywhere so that I always had one nearby. So think about those self-care comfort items. If you had them, um, stocked and ready, then that would just be something that you can always reach for whenever you need a quick break. Tip number eight is going to make me sound like your mother, and I'm totally okay with that. You need to keep your phone charged. Do you have enough chargers? My hot tip is to get the most brightest, obnoxious phone chargers to take to school. So I'm thinking neon pink, neon green. If you already have the plain kind and you have enough, then you can just wrap it in duct tape, put your teacher label on it, whatever you need to do to let people know that that's yours. Everyone's going to want to borrow your phone charger and that's completely fine, but you do want to get it back. So that's my tip for you. All right, moving on. We are almost done with this non-teaching tips list. This is to take a look at your calendar. So add any upcoming events now to your calendar. And these aren't school events, but your social life, your personal life, things you want to do. Put those on your calendar now before it starts all filling up with things for school. You don't want to accidentally miss spending time with them because you're double booking. So now's the time to print out a calendar, look online, use your phone, whatever works for you, but schedule in all of those birthdays. And you know graduation's coming up for your nephew or niece and you don't want to miss it. Put all of those things in your calendar now. This last non-teaching tip may not be for you, but I found it really helped me out. And that is to have some type of mess message or memento, something that I could refer to whenever I was having a really tough time. So maybe it's a positive quote. It doesn't have to be teaching. Maybe it's personal that you have put into your teaching bag. I know one year I got in my car and my husband had left me a note because I was having a tough time and it definitely helped, but I also held on to that note, kept it in my car. So when I was sitting in traffic or getting into my car and not wanting to drive to school that day, it was something that was there for me. So think about that. Is there a reminder 
or two or three. Maybe it's a photo album on your phone of screenshots of messages or quotes or pictures of your family and friends. Anything that can help you just feel a little more grounded. I found that was really helpful when I was having a tough time at school. All right, that wraps up the top 10 non teaching tips. If you are looking for a few more details and information, I have these in a blog post. I will be sure to link that in the show notes. Definitely let me know which tips helped you the most or if there's anything that we should add to this list that can help others. Thank you so much for listening and I'll catch you next time in the Special Educators Resource Room. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'm dying to ask, what'd you think? Be sure to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. You can find the show notes and links for everything mentioned in this episode at PositivelyLearningBlog.com. See you next week for more special education solutions.